Oregon has more rivers designated as wild and scenic than any other state. People travel from across the nation to rock our wild rapids, fish our salmon and trout in our expansive national forests. Our thriving agricultural industry we are so proud of depends on clean and plentiful water. As do our cities, industries, and everyone who lives here, yet our rivers are at risk. Every major river in Oregon is out of compliance with the water quality standards that protect human health and aquatic life, says the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality. What if I told you that fish coming out of a river nearby are considered not fit for human consumption, but we still swim in that river every day? All because of pollution and runoff. When water hits surfaces such as streets, sidewalks, and roofs, it then flows over land instead of soaking into the soil as it would with in a more natural area. Most stormwater systems were not designated with water quality in mind. They send untreated stormwater uh, directly from the storm drains into, storm, into streams or pump it underground at high volumes carrying all the pollutants, including eroded soil, oil, metals, bacteria, and pesticides. It has had such an impact on the river, the Department of Environmental Quality estimates it will take 20 years before the Willamette will meet water quality standards for bacteria and 50 to 100 years uh, to reduce the mercury levels low enough that resident fish are no longer hazardous to eat. The two keys to reducing urban runoff impacts are preventing pollutants from entering stormwater in the first place and improving stormwater management. Individual governments and businesses can all take steps to reduce their contribution to stormwater pollution. Changing the way we manage our stormwater will clean out the remaining pollutants and restore natural hydrology back to the ecosystem. Modern stormwater management either harvests rainwater for potable or non-potable uses or utilizes the natural ability of plants and soils to cap capture and filter the runoff and allow for clean water to recharge groundwater supplies. Mimicking a natural hy hydro hydrological system. The Oregon Environmental Council is a group that aims to educate individuals, businesses, and local governments on ways to improve the green grade. They work to reduce urban runoff, use, use water efficiently, and prevent pollution. They have organized workshops in communities around the state for developers, planners, engineers, and builders of urban areas on stormwater solutions, and they try to show them how to make cities function more like a natural system by integrating green infrastructures. Low impact development uh, is a term used to describe a set of development practices to reduce stormwater runoff by preserving existing natural site features and installing small scale stormwater uh, technologies that mimic the way our nature kind of manages the rainfall. An example of an LID practice is a rain garden on the roof of city buildings uh, that helps slow and capture and filter the water from the sky instead of just letting it hit the ground and run all the oil and the bacteria into the uh, water. LID practices can reduce the negative impact of storm uh, water runoff in Oregon and it'll turn it back to the resource that it really started out to begin with. Forecasters in Oregon, uh, in the Oregon Office of Economic Analysis, expect there will be another 1.8 million people living in Oregon by the year 2040. As Oregon grows and development occurs, we need to shift to more sustainable stormwater management methods before additional damage is done to our waterways. Expanding the use of LID practices presents uh, an incredible economic opportunity for the state as we position ourselves as a leader in sustainable and green building movement. If steps aren't taken to reduce toxic pollutants and runoff into the rivers and waterways around us, we could end up with bodies of water that are unusable to humans at all. Could you imagine all the boat ramps locked up with chains and fences along the edge that have big signs that say, toxic, stay clear, we would have to just travel to go wakeboarding or intergyming during the summer. The only way we would be able to keep cool and fight the heat would be pools, which aren't really feasible to a lot and don't really make a lot of sense in Oregon. It's unfortunate that they're nowhere as big as our rivers and lakes that we are lucky enough to have in abundance in Oregon, but we need to make sure we can keep them that way. Some things you can do right now in your community to help uh, the problem are Keep storm drains clear to keep a steady flow of water through them and not create a big overflow through the drains all at once. Another thing you can do is help fight against dumping in storm drains. It's not just wrong to jump in them, it's against the law. Unlike water that flows down the drain in your home, water that goes from storm drains doesn't go through a water treatment plant. Instead, it goes straight to the nearby river or creek along with the pollution you put with it. If you have 
to dump liquids that have toxins that are bad for your rivers or groundwater, dump it down a toilet or sink where we'll go through the treatment process like when you dump it down the sink or the toilet at home. Even something simple as not dumping your old coffee out the car window and waiting until you can get to a sink can help make a difference in our water quality. If you wouldn't dump it in a fish tank, don't dump it in our river.